wanted to talk to you for a few minutes about the power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key that unlocks everything. Forgiveness is what gives, brings us into a relationship with the Lord in the first place. It's when we realize that he is the savior of the world, that we call on his name and we ask, we, we basically state, I believe in you, Jesus, come and lead my, my life. And there's scripture that talks about when we confess our sins. And so we, we just say, hey, I, I want you to come in and fill me with who you are. And I give you in exchange, lots of times I call it the great exchange, exchange. I give you who I am and I take back who you are. And really that's what, what a salvation is, is the great exchange. You give him who you are and he gives you back who he is. He wipes the slate clean and then he rebuilds you in the way that you were created to be. See, he doesn't change your personality. He doesn't change your hair color. He doesn't change a lot about you. But what he does is he instills in you the value of who you are. And he begins to build on why he created you. And he begins to show you who you are in him and how much he loves you. So that process begins truly with forgiveness. And I, my life, I'm going to tell you the story of my life. When I realized the power of forgiveness is when I read a verse that talked about the power, the amount, if we could weigh, you know, 10 pounds, if I was giving out 10 pounds, pounds of forgiveness, I was going to get 10 pounds of forgiveness back. And it's not in pounds. I'm just using that as an illustration. And I began to realize the amount of forgiveness that I extended to others and myself, which is a different topic altogether, was the forgiveness that I was going to receive back from the Lord. Because when we hold people in judgment, and that's what we're doing when we don't forgive people, is we're making the judgment over their life, then the Lord can't forgive us. He doesn't forgive us because we're making ourselves, we're setting ourselves up as judge. And when we forgive someone, we're re releasing a person from the debt of repayment. Um, Let's just talk about that. Let's say you were abused. If I'm not saying that forgiveness is saying that any abuse or many things that happened to us are okay, that it was right, that God sanctions it, that God says it's okay. No, that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, in the illustration of abuse, if you've been abused, it's like you have a ball and chain, maybe not even just wrapped around your foot, but it could be around your foot, but normally it's around your whole life. And everywhere you go, you're bound and you cannot move out into happiness. You cannot move out into freedom. There's always that, that one damaged part of you that can never be happy, can never be free. And when we begin to forgive our perpetrator, that unlocks those chains that we have either around all of us or around our legs and lets us go free. It gives the judgment of that person over to God so he can deal with them. And so forgiveness is powerful for you. Forgiveness is for you. It is not for the person that you are forgiving. Because when you don't forgive someone, you're not hurting them. You're hurting yourself. One um, illustration the Lord showed me, I come from... Um, central Michigan, and we get a lot of snow there in the wintertime. And when I was um, in my 30s, God began to do this work in me. And I really surrendered myself to the Lord and began asking him to show me how to be free and how to be whole, because I was such a broken person. And as he began to minister to me in the area of forgiveness through a counselor friend, um, he showed me um, in Michigan, we have these snow plows that come down through the freeway or the interstate most people call them. And they would have these big, we called them V plows because they would be just like this on the front of a truck, you know, to make a V to like that on the front of a big truck. Great, you know, great big two, three ton truck, way taller than I am. And that big V plow would be come go from the top to the bottom of the front of that truck. And it would just plow down through the freeway and snow would be thrown 30, 40 feet off to the side. And the Lord showed me a picture when he began to deal with me because we would have to go outside and shovel and you can get those big wide shovels or you can get just a little dirt square shovel. And he showed me a dirt square shovel and he gave me a picture of me shoveling snow with that little shovel. And we had a, quite a small driveway at the time, but even in that small driveway, if I would have tried to shovel out that driveway with that, that, um, small shovel. It, it would have taken me 24 hours at least to do that. And 
he began to speak to me and that was such a small space. He began to give me the correlation about how much forgiveness I needed. And the amount I needed would be like that interstate. It just stretched on and on and on. And I knew about the attitudes and the hatred and the anger and the, the mistrust and the brokenness that was inside of me. And he began to show me how it was all connected together. And so as he began to show me that, he, he showed me that V plow just flying down an interstate and all that snow flying. And he said, if you forgive at that level, that's the level in which I can forgive you. And then we went back to the little snow shovel, right, where I was just digging in and throwing out these little pieces of snow. And he said, and if you continue on this venue, we're going to be here a really long time. And I can forgive you at the level in which you forgive others. And I just want to tell you that. I just want to share that with you. The level in which you forgive others is the level in which you will be in return forgiven. I don't know about you, but I needed tons of forgiveness. And I cannot explain to you the joy and the peace and the release and the freedom and the comfort that I received once I learned the power of forgiveness. I tell people I choose to live a lifestyle of forgiveness. Instead of going through life worried about how people can hurt me, I choose to go through life looking for ways in which I can release the power of forgiveness towards others because I know it's so powerful. Many years later, I shouldn't say that many, maybe four or five years later, the Lord began to deal with me about forgiving myself. And as huge of an event it was for me to forgive people in my past, past teachers, parents, ex-husbands, husbands, makes it sound like I have many. I don't. Um, situations with friends, betrayals, uh, even um, spiritual betrayals, uh, pastors and so on that had hurt me terribly. He began to show me that I had hurt myself more than anyone else had. And I didn't trust myself. And I needed to forgive myself for not being able to do a lot of the things that I thought that I should have done. Number one, for, I had to forgive myself for entering into a divorce. I had to forgive myself for failing as a parent. I wasn't as good of a parent as I thought I should have been. I had to forgive myself for allowing myself to be hurt is what I, I, what I had held myself to a very high standard much higher than really could truly ever be achieved. And so there were just lists and lists and lists and lists of things in which God required me and showed me that I needed to release myself. And as I begin, I can say it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life is to forgive myself for the wrongs in which I had failed myself and failed others and failed God. I was really... Um, almost like a martyrdom, you know, and we can get power out of mar martyrdom, but I can tell you it's a demonic power. It's not a godly power. God is not interested in us beating ourselves up. That is not the humility that he looks for in our lives. So I want to encourage you to investigate with the Lord, with the word, with someone, me or someone else about the power of forgiveness. If you can't, you know, it's not something that you can feel like you can reach out. It's not something that I have courses that are available. I have information that I'd be more than happy to, to share with you. And one of those are, as I just talked about the power of journaling in another video that I just did today, is I used this kind of a situation, just a notebook. I actually had for my forgiveness, I had a three ring binder because I wanted to keep track of it. And I wanted it to be separate from my journal. But in this three ring binder, what I did is I began to ask the Lord, who do I need to forgive? And he gave me name after name after name after name. And I wrote all those, name down, no, those names down. And then I went through and I wrote each one of those people a letter. Actually, it wasn't until years later what I did with this uh, notebook is I made a choice and I said these words, I choose to forgive I inserted the person's name for, and I wrote the circumstances. It wasn't blank. It was very specific. So if I had um, literally hundreds of things to forgive one person for, I wrote each item down and I dated it. And I said, I choose to forgive and release you from 
and that and I had that on there their name what it was I was forgiving them for and I dated it and I did this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and every time that I would release someone I would get another measure of peace and another measure of who God was in my life and as this continued, it was really over a period of time because I began to realize that a lot of this was occurring after a while in my mind as I would begin to think about certain circumstances. So I would go and get my little notebook and I would open up my three ring binder and I would begin to write. And then I noticed, oh, wow, I forgave him already for that. That is truly how I began to see the power of what happens in forgiveness and also the power of the enemy to keep us trapped in things that are already finished. And I learned about warfare through forgiveness, which is kind of a strange thing, but that's really what happened. You know, as we open ourselves up to healing and we follow the precepts that God sets out before us, he will open new ways to you. He will open new truths to you. Maybe he won't open spiritual warfare to you like he did to me. Maybe he'll open something else, but he will minister to you in a way that you'll never, ever have thought that he would. He will make it personal for you. So I encourage you because without freedom, there's nothing. The number one reason people don't get healed, the number one reason people don't get set free from deliverance is because of healing, because of forgiveness, excuse me, unforgiveness. The number one reason people don't get healed is because of unforgiveness. The number one reason people don't get free in a deliverance setting is because of unforgiveness. It is so huge. People just don't really understand the power of forgiveness. So I'm going to leave you with that today. I would love to help you if you need help trying to work through a, um, a trauma, maybe a betrayal, maybe a heart-wrenching wrenching situation, maybe a divorce, maybe a death of a loved one, maybe a husband or a child. You know, there are so many things there that um, if left alone, they become anger. And if they are left alone from that, it can move into depression and it can come really move into some serious things. You really need to consider if there are things, ask the Lord if there's anyone in your life that you need to forgive. And should you need help, please feel free to contact me. I would love to, to meet with you and uh, talk to you about the power of forgiveness and give you some advice on how to go and where to go from there. Um, if not, you can check out the website. I do have a membership part, portion of my website that I'd be happy to get you into so that you can learn more about forgiveness there. Or you can begin that journaling process. You can begin writing those letters out. You begin asking God, who is it? that I need to forgive and start there and he will lead you. So I just want to leave you with that today and tell you, I want to leave you on a positive note because forgiveness always brings good things into your life. It brings healing. It brings peace. It brings joy. It brings more than you can ever imagine. And I encourage you to pursue living a lifestyle of forgiveness. God bless you.